from Tech Tire and Wheel here to welcome you to the Tech University Self-Sealing Passenger Tire Repair Course. In this course, we will discuss the steps for a proper one-piece puncture repair in self-sealing passenger tires. These tires are quite different from a standard passenger tire, so the repair process will also be different. So what exactly is so different about self-sealing tires compared to a regular passenger tire? The difference is that a self-sealing tire has a layer of sealant material on top of the inner liner that's designed to fill and seal punctures. This material will present some challenges when a repair is performed. Now, you may ask yourself, if the tire has a sealant built into it, why would I ever have to repair it? If you remember from the industry recommended practices module within Tires 101, in order for a tire to be properly repaired, it must be dismounted from the wheel for proper inspection and then repaired with a vulcanizing rubber stem and repair unit. The sealant alone does not meet these requirements. So when a puncture is detected, it must still be repaired following industry guidelines. The tire manufacturers also state that the sealant is not a proper permanent repair. The first step in proper tire repair, which is R, remove the tire from the wheel and inspect the tire. By removing the tire from the wheel, it allows you to fully inspect the tire, including the inside of the tire for any non-repairable conditions. This inspection is to ensure the tire can be repaired and is safe to be returned to service. Remember, your role as a tire technician is important as you inspect and assess that a tire is in fact repairable or non-repairable. Your inspection should include the bead area, the sidewalls, the tread area, and inside of the tire. If you see any injuries, mark them during this inspection process with a high quality tire marker. When the tire is inspected, there are several conditions deemed by the tire industry guidelines as non-repairable conditions. A tire that has been run flat or shows underinflated conditions, tire inner liner separations, tire casing separations, excessive tread wear, exposed body plies or cables, deformed bead or exposed fabric steel, ozone cracking, damage from impacts. Once you determine that the tire does not suffer from any of these non-repairable conditions, it is time to begin the second step in the process, which is E, evaluating the injury. As you evaluate the injury to a tire, if the object that punctured the tire is still present, you need to remove it. This is the perfect time to visually examine the injured area of the tire. Before an accurate measurement of the injury can take place, you will need to move the sealant away from the puncture. To do this, take your scraper and remove the sealant from around the injury. Next, use Tech's TRT-105 inspection tool to quickly and precisely measure the size and the angle of the injury while minimizing the chance of enlarging the damaged area. The injury size and angle are two critical pieces of information you'll need to select and install the appropriate repair. Please note if the injury angle exceeds 35 degrees, the tire should not be repaired. Due to the nature of these tires, contamination is likely to occur from residual sealant material, which could result in the failure of a two-piece repair. Keep in mind, the industry standard for a one-piece repair is 25 degrees. Tech has performed extensive in-house testing and engaged an independent outside testing facility to determine the maximum angle of injury that Tech Uniseal Ultras can safely repair. The results from both in-house and the independent lab confirm that Tech's Uniseal Ultra repairs can safely repair an injury angle of 35 degrees or less. The injury size and location also have limitations per industry standards. For passenger tires, the maximum injury size is a quarter of an inch or six millimeters. To be considered a puncture repair, the injuries must be located in the crown area of the tire. Many states have passed new laws regarding tire repairs, so be sure to verify your state's maximum allowable injury size. Keep in mind that injuries in the shoulder and sidewall areas cannot be repaired with a Tech Uniseal Ultra Repair. In this example, the injury is less than 35 degrees and in the crown area of the tire, so a Tech Uniseal Ultra Repair can be used. Here, we can see the injury has accepted the tool just below the second line. This calls for the use of a Tech 250 UL Uniseal Ultra Repair for a quarter of an inch or six millimeter injury. The third step in the tech repair process, which is P, prepare the injury. As you recall, this course is focused on self-sealing tires. So if you haven't already done so, use your scraper to remove the sealant from the injury and expose the inner liner in an area slightly larger than the repair unit that will be used. 
If the sealant has a protective layer on it, as shown here, use a wire brush to remove this film and expose the tacky sealant underneath. With these tires, you will not remove the sealant from around the injury. The repair will need to be placed directly on top of the sealant. Due to the makeup of the sealant and the likelihood of contamination, buffing the inner liner is not recommended on self-sealing tires. The next step in the procedure is to use the appropriate size Tech Carbide Cutter in a low speed drill with a maximum speed of 1200 RPMs to properly prepare the injury. Drill out the injury from the inside of the tire and repeat this process a minimum of three to five times in a passenger tire. Next, repeat this procedure three to five times from the outside of the tire to ensure proper injury preparation. The fourth step in the tech repair method for proper tire repair. The A in tech's process represents applying the vulcanizing fluid. So let's get started. Now that the injury has been properly repaired, apply tech 760 chemical vulcanizing fluid into the injury from inside the tire using a spiral cement tool. When inserting the tool, be sure to rotate in a clockwise direction. This procedure should be repeated three to five times depending on the thickness of the tire. You'll leave the spiral cement tool in the injury to prevent the vulcanizing fluid from drying. Follow this by applying a thin, even coat of Tech Chemical Vulcanizing Fluid to the exposed surface of the inner liner. Do not apply vulcanizing fluid to any unprepared surfaces. This could lead to contamination of the repair area and the can of vulcanizing fluid. You need to allow approximately three to five minutes for the vulcanizing fluid to dry. Additional drying time is required in cold and humid climates. Vulcanizing fluid must be completely dry before applying the repair to avoid trapping solvent under the repair, which could create air bubbles and ultimately could result in the repair failing. If the tire had the protective film over the sealant and the sealant was not removed, do not apply vulcanizing fluid unless the sealant isn't tacky. If the sealant is tacky, the repair will adhere to the sealant. The fifth step in the tech repair process, which is I for install the repair. In our previous course, you applied the vulcanizing fluid and have allowed enough time for it to completely dry. Next, you'll prepare the Uniseal Ultra Repair Unit for installation. Begin by removing the protective poly covering from the stem by twisting and pulling the stem to break the poly free. Next, reposition the poly on the repair to expose the center of the repair unit. A word of caution, touching the cushion gum will cause contamination that may lead to repair failure. This is why you'll use the plastic as a place to hold the repair. Now apply Tech 760 chemical vulcanizing fluid to the black tapered area of the stem only. This ensures proper lubrication to make the insertion of the repair unit easier. If you're using a tire spreader, be sure to relax the tire beads to prevent what's known as bridging of the repair unit. Bridging creates areas where the repair is not making full contact with the tire's inner liner. This can lead to premature failure of the repair. You can now remove the spiral cement tool, then feed the lead wire of the Uniseal Ultra into the injury from the inside of the tire. Next, grasp the lead wire on the outside of the tire with a pair of pliers and carefully begin to pull the Uniseal Ultra into the injury. Pull until the repair unit seats against the inner liner. Be sure not to over pull. This will cause dimpling and possible breakage of the stem. Once the Uniseal Ultra is in place, press down on the center of the repair unit with your thumb. And now using your stitcher, stitch the repair unit down, working from the center outward. This process removes any air which might be trapped between the repair unit and the inner liner of the tire. Exert firm pressure on the stitcher to maximize adhesion. After partially stitching the repair, remove the colored poly from under the edges and continue stitching to the edges of the repair. After stitching is completed, make sure to remove the clear protective covering found on the cap of the repair unit as shown. Now you'll go to the outside of the tire and cut off the Uniseal Ultra stem approximately an eighth of an inch or three millimeters above the tire's outer surface. The Uniseal Ultra stem is now properly in place. If possible, use your scraper to push the sealant material back over the top of the repair unit. This will ensure that the edges of the repair unit are properly sealed and that the sealant is properly protecting the entire crown area of the tire again. If the repair was placed on top of the sealant or you are unable to move the sealant back over the repair, then cover the edges of the repair unit with Tech Security Coat or Butyl Liner Repair Sealer. So what else is involved with returning the tire to service? 
Well, we have to remount the tire to the wheel, then balance the tire and wheel assembly, then install the wheel assembly to the vehicle following proper procedures, and if the vehicle is equipped with TPMS, relearn the system if necessary. To learn more about Tech's complete line of tire repairs, specialty chemicals, and all the tools used in our Tech training course, refer to the list at the end and contact your Tech distributor or visit techtirerepairs.com.